What's going on guys? The Comics Kid 2099 here to examine Uncanny X-Men issue 147 uh, by this lovely group of people here. Uh, in this issue, uh, all of the X-Men, uh, they escape from the various traps that Doctor Doom had put them in. Uh, Nightcrawler, uh, he knows that uh, he's uh, probably in the catacombs of Doctor Doom's castle, and Angel uh, had visited Doctor Doom's castle in an issue of Marvel 2 and 1, and so uh, Nightcrawler figures uh, the catacombs are about a mile underground, so if he teleports about two miles in the air, he should be good. Uh, but, of course, there's this uh, storm that at one point in the issue, uh, it says this is the worst storm that the planet has seen since its infancy. Uh, and uh, so Nightcrawler has to navigate back down to the ground, and he's temporarily passed out, so he's gaining velocity. And if he teleports to the ground, he will still be traveling at the same velocity as what he was in the air. Uh, so he has to navigate through uh, an updraft to kind of slow him down a little bit. Uh, it's a pretty cool uh, scene. It makes sense. Uh, it uses established lore with Nightcrawler's powers. Uh, we found out, like, in Giant Size Issue 1 or uh, 94, uh, that Nightcrawler cannot uh, just teleport while he's falling through the air. Uh, and so this is able to put him in a dangerous situation and get him out of it in a way that doesn't feel like it's being pulled out of uh, Chris Claremont's butt. Uh, and then uh, Angel and Colossus both individually are able to outsmart their traps. Uh, Colossus uh, is able to figure out that... Uh, because he's bigger when he's Colossus than he is when he's regular human Peter Rasputin, uh, the, the lasers, they are only programmed to fire when something that is the size of Colossus uh, falls into the water. So he turns into his human form uh, and then swims past the lasers. Then he's able to turn back into Colossus and uh, break through the wall. Uh, and then Angel, uh, he is able to recognize the pattern of the lasers in the room that he is in. Uh, he even mentions that it's very similar to the Danger Room. Uh, before he even said that, I was thinking this seems like something uh, that would happened in a 60s issue of the danger room uh, but then uh, they're all able to get out Wolverine basically just decides I am NOT going to let my beastial animal side uh, take over and then he slices the wall uh, and then he gets out uh, this was a little weird to me because uh, in this very issue uh, Dr. Doom has a robot that looks like storm and Wolverine sees the robot and then attacks it and he tells doom uh, it looked like storm but I don't just rely on my eyes I also rely on my hearing and my smell uh, and I was thinking okay he's in this MC Escher room with an anti-gravity element to it, why can't he just close his eyes and then release his claws and then slice at the wall and then eventually he will hit the anti-gravity thing and then he'll be able to get out of here the same way that he did. Uh, why? Because it seems like the walls are relying on assaulting his sense of seeing. Uh, and But I guess uh, somehow the walls are triggering his uh, animal rage uh, and then we do get a flashback to when he was still uh, with uh, the Canadian government and how he almost killed uh, his friends uh, Mac and Heather. Uh, and I feel like this kind of puts a new spin on why Wolverine left the Canadian government. Uh, because uh, when you go back and look at Giant Size X-Men issue 1, previously we had like one and a half issues uh, that Wolverine had appeared in in the Hulk series uh, where he's just an agent who went after the Hulk and then uh, in Giant Size Issue 1, Professor X says, hey, do you want to join the X-Men? And Wolverine says, sure. Uh, and then uh, he tells his boss, I don't want to be here anymore. And it just kind of feels like it doesn't really have any rhyme or reason. But here, you find out, oh, he almost killed his two best friends who saved him from being a mindless animal. And it kind of makes sense, okay, he wants to leave them so that he doesn't do them any harm. Uh, now, it doesn't really make sense then that he would want to go with the X-Men because after a while he starts to form friendships with the X-Men and if he is still in danger of uh, re giving into his animal rage, then that doesn't really make sense. In theory, he would just want to go and move into a log cabin somewhere out in the middle of nowhere where he wouldn't hurt anyone, but at least it kind of makes sense why he wanted to leave the Canadian government when he did. Uh, so all of the X-Men, they escape uh, and then uh, Wolverine, uh, he uh, threatens Doctor Doom and says, Turn 
turn Storm back into a regular human, uh, or I'll kill you. Uh, and then Storm uh, is kind of, uh, they're, they're hinting on the cover like, ooh, we've done it once. We turned Jean into Dark Phoenix. Now look, Dark Storm. Uh, and even in the issue, Wolverine says, oh no, not again. Uh, and Storm is kind of uh, giving in to her, uh, uh, her power. She uh, truly thinks of herself as a goddess. Uh, whenever we first met Storm in Giant Size, uh, she was being worshipped as a goddess. But you get the feeling, and I think Professor X got the feeling, she didn't really believe the hype. And now, it seems like she really does. Uh, and then uh, the X-Men are able to convince Storm, uh, you, this is not you. You are a human. You have friends who love you. And so she goes up into the air, and she calms the Storm. Uh, and then she starts to fall, and Angel rescues her. And then uh, Storm says to Doctor Doom, hey, uh, we would really like to take Arcade off your hands uh, because we have friends and family who are in danger if we don't rescue him. And Doctor Doom says, fine, as long as he apologizes. Uh, Arcade apologizes. Uh, and Doctor Doom basically says, hey, uh, this was all just a misunderstanding. You guys attacked my house, so I attacked in return. Let's just call it even. And Storm says, okay. Uh, and then we cut to uh, Cyclops and Lee Forrester on the island. Uh, Cyclops accidentally calls her Jean. Uh, and then uh, they notice a gigantic uh, alien looking city on an island not too far from where they are. Uh, and that is hinting at something that's going to be happening a couple of issues down the line. Uh, we do briefly cut to uh, Norod Base, which is where uh, Count Nefaria had taken over in issue 94, and that's where Thunderbird died. Uh, and uh, this one guy says uh, that the storm is mostly centralized around upstate New York. And then this other guy says, okay, that does it. I'm calling the president. And that goes nowhere. I really have no idea what the president would be able to do about this, but I don't know why the storm is located around upstate New York. Uh, as we discussed in our previous issue, the storm was pretty bad somewhere in uh, the Caribbean, where Lee and Scott are, somewhere in New York, where uh, the backup team of X-Men were rescuing the hostages at Murder World, and then somewhere in uh, Central Eastern Europe, uh, where uh, Doctor Doom is. Uh, but since that is where Storm is, the storm should be at its worst where she is. Uh, I don't know why it would be centralized around upstate New York, which is like on the other end of the planet from where Storm is right now. Uh, that doesn't really make sense. Also, we were told a couple of issues ago that Doctor Doom is currently not the leader of Latveria, that he has been kicked out and he is waiting to take back Latveria. So, I have no idea where Doctor Doom is, because Nightcrawler just assumes that he is in the catacombs beneath Doctor Doom's castle. And I assume, because Doctor Doom is not the leader of Latveria at this time, that he wasn't in his main castle. Uh, but uh, Nightcrawler mentions that Angel has been in Doctor Doom's castle recently, and based on the information Angel gave him, that is what led to Nightcrawler teleporting. So it seems like this is Doctor Doom's main castle. So it's really weird that Doctor Doom is not not the leader of Latveria at this time, but he's still hanging out in his normal castle that he lives in all the time. Uh, and I feel like that's something that the creative team wasn't really thinking about here. Um, Overall, I didn't really enjoy this issue. I think this could have been a two-parter instead of being as long as it was. I think you could have just had all of the X-Men go and rescue the hostages. You didn't have to have a group go and rescue them and then another group go uh, and fight Doctor Doom. I've said this before. I felt like that was a big waste of time. Uh, I don't mind a nice little uh, one-off short story after you had a uh, pretty long uh, Dark Phoenix saga. I just wish that the story made some kind of sense. Uh, I don't really know uh, what was at stake with uh, Arcade uh, because when the X-Men first try to rescue Arcade, he's just walking around and it makes it seem like Arcade and Doctor Doom are working together. And that's what I thought when we got to the end of that issue. And then uh, we find out, no, Arcade is a prisoner of Doctor Doom, but for some reason he's just allowed to walk around. Uh, so, uh, overall, uh, not my favorite uh, storyline here. I think that uh, it feels to me like uh, Burn, I'm sorry, after Burn left, that Claremont needed to uh, kind of get back on his feet. Uh, you can tell that Burn had a lot to do with co plotting the series. And when half of your plot team leaves, uh, then you kind of have to uh, scramble uh, to figure out what you're doing. And uh, maybe uh, Dave Cockrum said, hey, I like Doctor Doom. I like Arcade. What if we did something with them? And maybe they just threw something together. I don't know. Uh, I feel like um, they are pretty soon going to be 
be doing. Uh, I, I want to say Dave Cockrum uh, is still here when they go back into space, but I can't remember. I know Cockrum leaves pretty soon, uh, but I can't remember if that's before or after the X-Men go back into space, but I do feel like Cockrum uh, enjoyed the space stuff uh, since he was drawing some of that uh, before Burns started drawing, but uh, overall, I felt like this whole storyline just kind of felt like uh, it was a, a big miss, for me, anyway. Uh, so uh, that is about all that I have to say about this issue, so let's consider this one to examine.